Hello friends, this video on photosynthesis in higher plants part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us look at the various pigment which are involved in the process of photosynthesis. Now what, do, what are pigments? Pigments are those substances that have an ability to absorb light at specific wavelengths. So chlorophyll is an example of a substance which is present inside a plant and it has the ability to absorb light at specific wavelengths. Like as I said, even if you talk about the visible light alone, there also each component of light has different wavelengths. If you compare the wavelength of red light to blue light, the difference in wavelength is quite huge. So there are substances which have the ability to absorb light of some specific wavelengths and those substances are known as pigments. So when we talk about examples of pigments which are involved in photosynthesis. Now some of the examples of pigments which are involved in photosynthesis are chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, xanthophylls, carotenoids. So these are examples of some pigments which are involved in the process of photosynthesis. So you might be wondering that till now we thought there was only something called as chlorophyll but we have something like chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B as well. They are different because of the difference in their structures. Now let us try to understand the significance of light for photosynthesis because here we are talking about absorbing light. So so when I may say sunlight is important of photosyn for photosynthesis, not every type of light which is coming from the sun is important for photosynthesis. Only a particular section is involved in the process of photosynthesis. So if you see, if you talk about the sunlight, the light itself has is the electromagnetic spectrum. It has got gamma rays, x-rays, ultraviolet rays, infrared rays, radar, FM, TV, shortwave, there are so many types of waves which are present in the electromagnetic spectrum depending upon their wavelengths. But only this much portion of the electromagnetic spectrum is utilized for photosynthesis and this section is visible light. Now this visible light, if you pass the visible light which appears to be white through a prism, you see that it gets divided into its constituent colors. And all these constituent colors together form the white colored visible light. Now in the process of photosynthesis, mostly the blue and the red light are absorbed. So why blue and red light are absorbed? Because maybe the pigments which are involved in photosynthesis, they have the ability to absorb light of these particular wavelengths. And that is why mostly these lights are absorbed. Right? So let us talk about each of these those pigments in little more detail. That what are the role of those pigments? So let us first talk about chlorophyll A. Now chlorophyll A is a blue-green colored pigment. It is the most important pigment which is involved in the process of photosynthesis. But that is that is this is the pigment which primarily absorbs light from the visible section. So why do we say that this is the most important pigment? Because maximum absorption occurs in the blue-red region of the spectrum. We observe that from the Engelmann experiment. You remember the bacteria, the oxygen-loving bacteria got accumulated more in the red and the blue region of the spectrum. That meant that maximum photosynthesis occurred in those regions. So maximum absorption of light also occurs in the blue and red region of the spectrum. So if you look at the graph of absorption of the different pigments, now this is for chlorophyll A. The blue colored line which you see, that is for chlorophyll A. The orange colored light which you see, that is for carotenoids or xanthophylls, whatever you call it. Now this one which you see that is for chlorophyll A and this one is chlorophyll B. So this graph or the plot shows the rate of absorption, how much absorption does each of them do. So if you see chlorophyll A, maximum absorption happens in the red and the blue region. So this is the wavelength of the light and this is 
the absorption rate. So here it shows the absorption and here it shows the wavelength. Right? So the blue and the red region has the peaks. So that means maximum absorption happens in the blue and the red region and that is why maximum photosynthesis take place into these two regions. If you look at other chlorophyll molecules, you see xanthophylls, maximum absorption only in one side of the spectrum, no absorption on the other side. Similarly, if you see chlorophyll B, very high absorption on this side, but comparatively very low absorption on the other end. So chlorophyll A is the one which shows maximum absorption or equally high absorption on the blue as well as the red end. And in the middle, the absorption is very less. So chlorophyll A is the most important pigment in photosynthesis. If you try to compare the rate of photosynthesis with the absorption of chlorophyll A, this graph shows the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll A and this red curve shows the photosynthesis action spectrum. That is how, what is the rate of photosynthesis when compared to the wavelength of light in the electromagnetic spectrum. You see the rate of photosynthesis at the blue and the red end is high. The absorption of chlorophyll A is also high and in the similar regions. Now since the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll A and the action spectrum of photosynthesis are very similar to each other, but this similarity is not there between the photosynthesis spectrum and the absorption spectrum of chlorophyll B or xanthophyll. So that is why we say that chlorophyll A is the main pigment which is involved in photosynthesis because wherever the chlorophyll A absorbs more light in whichever regions, those are the regions where the rate of photosynthesis is also maximum. So without chlorophyll A, photosynthesis cannot take place. Now, if chlorophyll A is the only one which performs the main function, then what is the need of having the other pigments like chlorophyll B or xanthophylls or carotenoids? What is their role? Okay, so we will see that also. So that is why chlorophyll A is a necessary pigment. So without this Photosynthesis cannot happen. Let us now look at the role of the other pigments. Then why at all the other pigments are present in plants? These other pigments are known as accessory pigments. That means they are not necessary. Even if these pigments are not there, if chlorophyll A is there, photosynthesis can happen. But they are like good to have pigments. If they are present, it is better. So what do they do? They enable some photosynthesis to occur in other regions of the spectrum also, except red and blue. So if you see, if you look at the uh, spectrum of xanthophyll or carotenoid, this yellow one, you see they absorb quite a few light even between red and blue. So these two are the red and blue region. But even between them, these spectrum absorb some light. So because of them, some photosynthesis, even though little, will also take place in between the red and the blue regions. So that is why if you look at the rate of photosynthesis, of course, undoubtedly it is maximum in the red and blue region. But in other regions also, some photosynthesis is happening. It is not zero. Some photosynthesis is happening even though that is less. So this small amount of photosynthesis in these other regions is mainly because of the accessory pigments because they absorb some light in these regions. They also protect chlorophyll A from photooxidation. Now since chlorophyll A is the main pigment for photosynthesis, it is very important that we ensure protection of chlorophyll A. Chlorophyll A should be protected from being oxidized because chlorophyll A have a tendency to get oxidized in presence of light. So these accessory pigments also help to protect chlorophyll A from being photooxidized. So these other pigments perform two roles. One is they help to some photosynthesis to happen between the red and the blue region of the spectrum and they help in the protection of chlorophyll A from photooxidation. So what are these accessory pigments? Chlorophyll B which is yellow to green in color, xanthophyll which is yellow in color and carotenoid which is yellow orange in color. So that is why because of the presence of so many pigments you would have actually seen that if in a plant chlorophyll A becomes less, if there is scarcity of chlorophyll A, what happens? The color of the leaves 
turn to become lighter. For example, if the leaf was dark green in color, gradually the color fades. It becomes light green and then sometimes if there is no chlorophyll A at all, sometimes the color turns yellow. So that yellowish color is because of these accessory pigments because if you see all of them have a yellowish touch in their color. So because of their presence, the leaves tend to have a yellowish color. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.